Hey Blake, I really don't want to do this to you, but we all we all listen to it, especially if you guys did appreciate you. We all listen to the preview show, um, UC Talk Twenty Nine, about you know us previewing UC Two Fifty Seven. You saw the predictions on Twitter, Instagram, and you know Blake, I I really don't want to say this, but uh, I told you so. You didn't tell me nothing. <laughs> I told you. You didn't tell so. me nothing. You- I told. You make your predictions so weird. You just wait for us to make ours and then pick the opposite. Are you kidding? Say, On our show, I, I said Poirier and I said Chandler. You're just going – you literally said you're just going to be the opposite. No, no. Don't yourself. put those words in my you didn't mouth. You in yourself. But, but like we literally went over this on the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see you smiling. You don't, don't believe in yourself, don't, buddy. Don't give me that. Yeah, that was wrong as hell, dude, but that's the fight game. Hey, that's, also that's well, what else is the fight so game? interesting. Oh yeah, hey, um, we're not gonna give records, but I just don't want biz. I, I feel bad for you, Blake. Be, um, just know that I did get at least what two fights right. You got at least two right, and yeah. I got Maybe the three? most right out of, out of the um the three of us. So hey, on the champion again, the belt is but back. I mean, to all of our records there. weren't that great, if I remember. I was right. I got three wrong, so I was what six and three. And Jalen was six and four, and you were something tough. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's our thing. Um, of course, I'm your host Ross Allen. This is our UFC correspondent Blake Campbell, and this is UFC Talk Thirty. And in today's show, we'll be focusing on Dana White's anti-pirate story. Hopefully, you guys caught this one. If not, it's pretty damn funny. Breaking down UFC 257. What is next for the lightweight divisions? And also bring up your fan questions to top off the show. But Blake, before we get into this hard, let's talk about a great way to make some money. If you're really good at this stuff. So Thrive Fantasy. It's a um, it's a uh, sports a sports betting app where you can get prop bets and stuff like that. You know, NFL, NBA, all this, all the sports going on. We got NFL, we got the Super Bowl coming up real soon, so it's going to be great for that. And Blake, you've actually had some time on this app, and you have enjoyed it, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's been okay. It was a little tough to get the hang of it first because mm-hmm. I've never done prop betting before. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I struggled my first week, didn't really make any money. But now I'm kind of got, I kind of have the hang of it now. I think there you go. Um, and now I know a little bit uh, more of what bets I should be making, the bets that are going to be more in my favor. You know, uh, weighing out the risk and the reward. So it, it's definitely grown on me a little bit. Um, I'm starting with the lower prizes first, mm-hmm. so I, it's you know the lower buy-ins, so I can I can play more and get more experienced rather than going for those big prizes. Oh, that's smart. Know, at first, so we'll see. I'm I'm getting my experience up still. I'm still not not anything to write home about yet, but it's it's still very interesting. Hey, it's all good. The base you have some time to learn because you essentially get free money when you use our promo code. If you use the promo code fourth and long uh, for those that are just listening, it's the number four T H A N D. L O N G caps don't matter. And if on deposits of at least 20 bucks, they'll match your deposit up to $50. So Blake, you, uh, I know you deposit 20 your first time. You essentially got $23 with, uh, with that promo code. So yeah, 25 actually don't, Ooh. don't sell me short. Oh, okay. 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 25 on that, man. Hey, I'm sorry. You're a high roller. You're a high roller. You know, Put a little respect yeah, on take it. Risks. Yeah. But just go thrive fancy.com. Diversify the portfolio. <laughs> I love it. Uh, or download the Thrive Fantasy app. You can find that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Do that today and get some free money almost. Um, but, Blake, let's get into things heavy with that anti-pirate story. I mean, we all know this. The, there's a whole thing going into uh, this pay-per-view where Dana White was going to be you know, tracking down these uh, these streamers. And he was really going. they were going to be kind of cracking down on these things and trying to ban as many as they can. And that didn't really happen. Also, it doesn't help. Let's just talk real quick. You can speak personally, too. We saw this all over Twitter and stuff like that. But, Blake, you tried to give the UFC your money, and they oh, yeah. did not want it. <laughs> I'll take it away from here. Please. I just want to point out, FBI and Dana White, that I have three eyewitnesses ready to go. Oh. I Yes, I illegally streamed UFC 257. <sighs> did I have any other choice? Oh, no. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Dana White, ESPN. What the hell is going on? I'm trying to give you my money. I tried for 20 straight minutes. It was <laughs> until 722. You can probably look at the Snapchat receipts when I texted you yep. out of desperation. <laughs> yep. How can I watch this event? Because they're not taking my money. 
I don't know what the hell's going on with ESPN plus. That's just an embarrassment. Your freaking biggest card of the year. I mean, anytime Conor McGregor or, or fighting, was the biggest pay-per-views in company history. That's your marquee guy. That's your dude. That's your freaking JJ Watt. That's your, you know, that's your Steph Curry. That's your LeBron James. And you can't get your freaking streaming platform to work. Speaking of JJ Watt, he even had problems with this too. And dude, that has money. Everything. <laughs> it's not like JJ yeah, that... Watt would like a refund. And wait, I would wait. not like to owe him money. Dude, right. You think that it, you think JJ Watt doesn't have good internet, doesn't have good cable or anything like that. Dude, like I was telling you beforehand, half the UFC roster couldn't watch this card for like the first two or three fights no one knew what the hell was going on it was it was super Dude, frustrating it what sucks is ESP, even if uh like it i have espn plus i give espn my five bucks yep. a month for this but sometimes it's easier just to, the streams have better connection and quality sometimes <laughs> seriously it, the, the, there's the, been some espn plus cards where i've switched to the stream yes because it's it's so piss poor on ESPN Plus. I'm giving ESPN my money to watch this card, and I still choose not to use it because it's easier to illegally stream something. Okay, do we see the problem in this? Yeah, I mean, there's something that needs to be fixed. And that's that's just embarrassing. I feel like it's pathetic, really. Yeah. On, on the UFC and ESPN's uh, stance, but yeah. What are you gonna do? We're always gonna find a way around it. We're not trying to be bad people. We're just trying to watch the sport that we nope. love. We and are literally giving ESPN and the UFC our money, or at least attempting to. So yeah. Hey, hey, we gotta figure it out. We're good people. Hey, Dana, I heard a helicopter over my apartment um, during the fights, and dude, you gotta chill with that, okay? There's no need to send out the cops like that. And that's just you got the wrong guy. Got the wrong guy. <laughs> Sorry, going has some people um, rappelling through the roof, breaking through my windows. But I, I mean, we're folks, on a list now. Ooh, not the first time. But Dana White's anti-pirate story. Apparently, so he found someone. Had the police track him down. They found out who he was before the card. The streamer put out a statement saying he wouldn't pirate the fight, and actually put out a video um, describing how to purchase it legally. Now, I wish we also had the tutorial because maybe we would have had the easier time buying this damn thing. Maybe I should, yeah, maybe I should have went to that guy's stream. <laughs> Shoot, I guess so. But Dana White apparently plans on going after one or more streamers a card. Uh, so it's like he has a hit list. <laughs> He's just trying to cross each one off. Now, uh, see, that's that leads me to my next point, too. Is I, I kind of didn't think of this beforehand, but now looking back on it, I think that this was just all a big fear scheme. You, you think know? Like so? He was just trying to just build up fear in everybody because i mean think about it dude like he's probably not gonna push i mean he might push it every pay, every pay-per-view like just just because it, it, it might have helped the numbers mm. but for a mcgregor card you know that definitely had to have it, it, it worked for me i they know why just scare sure, people into buying the pay-per-view basically like i wanted to make sure there's no chance in hell like i'm, I'm gonna miss this card and in in doing so it like it screwed me up even worse, so I don't get it. Like, what the hell, dude? Damn it, Dana, for being the best president in sports, you kind of kick us in the butt a few times with this stuff. So I don't really get it. Is he trying to just build up fear and make people buy it buy it more, or is he really going to go after it? We're going to see the next pay-per-view that comes up if he still keeps this strong stance and throughout the whole year. Too. Probably going to see heavy it. UC 259. I mean, considering that's, what, three title fights? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, but... <laughs> One more story before you actually get into the full <laughs> breakdown 257 because we saw some crazy stuff the Friday before the card. We talked about this on episode 56, which we released on Monday. But a leading contender for the Sports Idiot of the Year trophy, Blake, goes to Ahmed Isatar. I know. I for was, man. Cutting out wristbands. Using that cutoff wristband to put on someone who was sneaking in, but then also the camp was in it, but also there's a mystery bag, and we don't know what was in the mystery bag. Mystery duffel bag. Dude, the mystery duffel bag. What? <laughs> and then he was... So, obviously, major guideline, like health and safety guidelines that he broke. So, they mm -hmm. usually just cut him. And... I think dude, they made the dude, exact right choice. Yeah, they did, but... He's so... So incredibly stupid. I can't even put into words. Like, dude, why? Yeah, that's one of those boneheaded moves where I, no one's gonna be able to understand that. You know, I don't. There's nothing that you could that that bag could contain, or for that person to be 
to make it worth losing his opportunity. I mean, think about what he, he's on the pinnacle of the U.S. He's on a Conor McGregor card. On the he's main the, card. Yeah, on the main card of a Conor McGregor That's card. a red penny night. <laughs> Dude. And he's already riding. He already had, what, one or two knockouts, I mm-hmm. think, in the UFC. 13-0, and 0, 11 finishes in the first round. He was coming the guy's up. record spoke for himself. He was in Conor McGregor's division, too, mind you. Fighting Matt Frivola, a guy who had a decently impressive record as well. I mean, the guy just... I don't know. He just threw it all away for 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 whoever knows for God knows what reason. All I, right, I, now I couldn't tell you. we have to speculate, Blake. In your professional opinion, what was in the bag? My highly professional opinion. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know it's hard to say. Like, I'm going with weed. Hard. I'm going with yeah. some. I'm going with drugs. I was gonna say it's hard to say drugs because he's a com- you know he's competing. I don't understand why he would. Hey, be- you saw that? Did just say that marijuana is not a suspendable offense anymore. Yeah, but still when you're in competition, I think there's like a what 12 day period before and after if you get tested by that uh the athletic commission, they can still suspend you. Not USADA, but the athletic commission wherever you're fighting at. So I think you're giving too much credit here, Blake, because considering he was willing to break major guidelines. I would think if anything, if I'm going to be honest, if it's going to be a drug, it's going to be cocaine. Ooh. John Jones action. Okay. Okay. That's what I would think. It would be something okay. that would be in and out of your system. So so you, you know. thinking Coke with this one? I would think so. Plus he's a European dude. I don't know. Are those guys very Ooh. big on marriage guans? Oh, that's a good point. Is that more of a sure. Western? I thought I thought they, I thought Europeans were more of like a you know the the uppers like party um uh, you know, like ecstasy. Dude maybe. has straight up LSD in that bag. I don't know about LSD. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking more Ooh. some uppers. But Blake, here we go. Weird, here we go. Weird. How to find yourself before a fight. He got advice from Joe Rogan. He got some good old DMT in that bag. <laughs> Man, that Ugh. would be something. Now, this is the mystery. That's over in 15 oh. minutes, though, so you could do that. Hey, right? Right? DMT is in your bloodstream already. I mean, you dream every night, don't you? most nights at least uh Sometimes. happy dreams most of the time yeah but dude i just had to talk about this fun yourself let us know what you think was in the bag give us your uh your thoughts about bag. that give us your predictions uh what's in the bag toilet paper drugs money oh it's the toilet pa- i'm no no way toilet paper i know sometimes to- uh, a hotels. dwarf a dwarf <laughs> Is that the – what's the correct term? Is it midget or dwarf? What's um, the vertically impaired is, is what you're going for, Blake. You're not supposed to call them one of those. It's one, of those one of them's real offensive. So I think I, both I, of them I, I apologize. Are. Oh, apologize where everything – oh, uh, yeah, we're definitely PC on this show. But but let's get into the main card. Let's get rolling to the action itself. It's about damn time. We started off with the biggest upset and the only fight I got wrong on this main card. We had number eight, Marina Rodriguez. KOing the hell out of Amanda Hibas with this one. Twice. Dude, good point. Twice. She knocked her out twice. 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 <laughs> I mean, Herb Dean freaking. I don't if know. They die, did, they die did Herb there. actually touch her? Did we see the replay? He if, didn't, but it was sus mm, AF. Mm, it was sus. Herb, yeah, what'd you that do? That was some imposter shit right there, dude. I don't know about that. Well, I'm glad that he got that out of his system early because he, he he looked good in the main yeah. event, at least. So, so he was fine. Uh, but 54 seconds into the second round, just landed a nice hit, just a nice strike to the jaw, knocked Dude, her it down. Her clean. It was clean. And Amanda uh, or uh, Amanda Hibas takes a little bit of hit on this one. Marina Rodriguez, you could expect her to climb the rankings with this one. Yeah. She, I mean, she's fighting a badass, dude. I mean, both of these women are just. Hebus, I think she had a little bit more of a shiny record just mm. because of the people she'd be, you know. Uh, I think she beat Dern, right? Didn't she? Beat yeah, she beat Dern. Dern. She beat, uh, she beat uh, Dern a few Paige fights Van ago. Zandt. She beat. Uh, well, she Marcos. ended Paige Van, Paige Van Zandt's UFC reign. Yeah. <laughs> Set so her to bare knuckle. She, this was really, I want to say, one of her probably toughest fights in the UFC so far. Mm-hmm. So it's only going to get they tougher for from both women. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, shoot, hat, hats, hats off to hats off to her. Marina. She looked freaking phenomenal. I was not expecting that. Uh, I was not expecting because... that power. Yeah, just because Hibas is a big girl herself, mm-hmm. you know. She, uh, I think her dad had a Snapchat um, after they, you know, started rehydrating after the weigh-ins, and she he said that she'd got back up to like I want to say almost one hundred and forty pounds. Well, she yeah, she was at one sixteen, then she got up to one hundred and forty-three. 
That's crazy, dude. That's, that's a lot of weight. Wild. That's a lot of weight. And she still got knocked silly. And Rodriguez, even after the rehydration, she was not that big. She mm-hmm. looked way closer to the actual 116, maybe like in the 120s, 130s. She was. So, she got some power behind those gloves, I'll tell you that much. I'm excited to see what she does next and what the UFC does next for her. Our right, next one was a middleweight bout between uh, Makma Muradov and he KO'd. Another great KO over Andrew Sanchez with a he led with a flying knee and then he yeah. finished him with punches. That was awesome and late in the fight too. Is about I would say is an even fight up until that point and then he made sure that it was not going to go to the judges. Yeah, that was a really exciting fight. Uh, I mean, it was close, super really super close. Third round came around and I remember one of my friends, uh, Will, he was actually texting me about it. He was just mm. like, man, I wish these guys would just let it go and then like literally right after that knockout so I hey like, appreciate oh, you will way to get them going go, will. You, got, you got your wish you got, got knocked out but yeah another that was like two phenomenal fights to start off the card action-packed knockouts what, what else could you ask for especially it was i wouldn't call the prelims lackluster but only decisions so it's not like they're bad fights but this main card definitely picked things up it was a, you could see it was a clear crescendo is what we had um, this evening in the fights. It really did lead up to that co-main and main event. Oh, boy. And now our third fight on that main card was our number seven ranked Joanne Calderwood getting the unanimous decision over the number six, Jessica I. Uh, a couple of 30-27s and 29-28 mm-hmm. on that one. I don't know what that judge was thinking. We all saw a couple more kind of thefts on, on this card. If we want to, t- if we want to talk about the first fight, the the prelims with uh, Khalil Roundtree and uh, Marcy and Pratchett, though, that was a Roundtree. That was a Roundtree dub. Okay, let's be real there. He would help my record out. <laughs> it would have helped me too. Uh, it would. I think it actually would have helped all of us. We all had them. So yeah. that was dumb. Uh, we saw the judges in like mid. Uh, can't call it mid-season candy since it's not really a season. It's not PFL. They were in peak form. Let, let's call it that much. But Calderwood gets that dub over Jessica I. And honestly, Blake, for how much you were hating on this fight uh, <laughs> leading up to it, it's a pretty good scrap. You got to admit no, that, right? It was a pretty damn good fight. You know, Calderwood and I, I said, if it was going to be an entertaining fight, it's going to be because of JoJo. It's not going to be because of Jessica I. No. I vividly remember me looking into the camera and – explicitly saying that I do not expect anything good coming from Jessica. I. You did. I, just don't, I you don't did. think she's a talented fighter <laughs> at all. Um, and that's just how I feel. I, she just doesn't mm-hmm. bring anything to the game. Like she doesn't strike. Well, she doesn't have any ground game. Technically I mean, she is a highlight real fighter. Just on the, on the other side, side of the, of the- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. She is a low light. Ooh, oh, man. Um, but yeah, dude, there was a couple of, there was a couple strikes in there from uh, Joanne Calderwood where I was just like, oh, uh, mm-hmm. one that comes to mind is the front kick yes. that she landed like right on uh, Jessica's freaking face. Mm-hmm. And it was just so clean. And then she landed a couple really good knees from the clinch. She landed some really good, uh, some, some good hooks up close. So it, it was, it was a pretty smooth, easy victory in my opinion for Joanne. And I think she, she might be an interesting fight for uh, Valentina just mm-hmm. for a round or two if they decide to stand. <laughs> hey, if we're being honest, Jennifer Amaya was a way better fight uh, against Shevchenko than we were all expecting. Hey, maybe Calderwood wouldn't be too bad. Uh, Calderwood looks like she actually has some weapons. Yeah. You know? If we want to give her a tune up fight, maybe we throw jo- Joanne against uh, Jukagian. And then if she wins, she cool. gets the title. Yeah, because Chukagian just beat Calvillo, who mm-hmm. beat Joanne. So that would be. Hey, that would work. That right? was back at 115, but still, you know, it carries over. Yeah, I, I mean, the, it's weird. It's, the women divisions are so fresh, you know. They're it's, so fluid. They don't really too. have any, any choice not to do that, you know. I mean, besides like the top contenders at each division, the. Women's divisions are pretty fluid in well, women going up and down. Yeah. I feel like 125 is just such a hybrid division right now. There's Besides Valentina staying at 125, there's not really been a lot of... I mean, I guess Chukagian, hmm, kind of? Yeah. 
The only the only not, not, division my that point being is, not everyone's yeah. staying there. People no. are kind of dabbling one fifteen or yeah. people are going the other way, going one thirty for a little bit and then or one thirty five and then mm-hmm. coming back to one twenty five. So yeah, the only division nice to see them build that division up. I would hope so. Uh, the only division where there really isn't anyone is the featherweight, and that's because with the women's featherweight division is a bantamweight that wants to sh- that doesn't want to cut doesn't want to cut weight. Yeah, <laughs> or it's Megan Anderson. Hey, Megan Anderson's kind of big, dude. Can she? I wonder if she can make one thirty-five. I don't think she could. That'd be tough. She's um, just, yeah, she's just really tall. Yeah, she is. It sounds like she's a heavy or like a large one thirty-five. That's just her build. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is, and now I'm sorry, a little off topic, but is that fight confirmed, Megan? Megan and and uh, and um, Amanda Amanda Nunes is going down to UC 259. That's one of the three right. title fights. Cool. Cool, cool, so cool. that is so we got Aljo and we got Piotr and we got Nunes and and um, sorry Anderson. Nunes Anderson. Then that's the Blahovich and Izzy fight. Oh yeah, yes. fire man! And then 260 is going to be Volk and Ortega. And then we got the uh, was announced on Saturday. The finally we get some news in the heavyweight division. We get Ngannou and Stipe too, and I'm really looking forward to that one. Even though it's probably going to go the same way, it'll but, still be fun to watch. Oh, of of course, it's just only, for the the fear aspect, you know. It's only the yeah, hold your breath. Yeah, right. I mean, what we got the we only have inside the octagon, Blake, one of the greatest like heaviest strikers of all time against the greatest heavyweight of all time no, so. i didn't get to see that fight live the uh the first time it was happening i was mm-hmm. flying back from cabo so i didn't get to see i think taking I barely, vacation days unbelievable i think i barely got to see the volkov and dc fight like before we uh, mm. uh started loading up and then once we were on our way i'm yeah. poor and didn't get wi-fi so so I had to listen to a baby screaming and, and just watch live even updates better. on mma junkie even better <laughs> but Dude, let's get into this. Let's get into this freaking coming because Michael Chandler has officially arrived in the UFC, my man. Dude. Oh my gosh. I was. So we were talking in the lead up of what I was expecting a Michael Chandler win. But I was expecting a Michael Chandler win that where he would grind it out and not s- trade strikes with Dan mm. Hooker. I was not expecting him to win, to outstrike him. But what do I know? Because he lands a massive left hook, instantly drops Hooker, and then he just finishes on the ground pound only 230 into the first. Only 230 yeah. into the first. And and you know, that's that's why I freaking I hate picking so early because what was I telling you? I was saying, man, this whole week, Chandler's giving me good vibes, man. This guy, you know, since we had recorded that episode uh-huh. all the week leading up, I was like, dude, I'm man, I know I already know what I have to go with. I picked Hooker, but Chandler, he's just he's saying all the right things. He's looking the right way. His attitude's on point. His, you know, he just just everything about him was just good vibes. Whereas Hooker, it almost seemed like he was um uh, I don't want to say overlooking him, but it, it almost seemed like it. You know, mm. he, I know he was saying like, yeah, he's a he's a formidable opponent, he's mm-hmm. a he's a champion and all that stuff, but it still kind of seemed like he was big brothering him, like, you know, you know, I'm in the UFC, I've faced all the top guys. You don't know what it's like, kind of vibe, dude. Chandler is that guy. I even had a tweet <laughs> the day of. I said I think I might be just as excited for this co-main event as I am for the main event. I really was. I really was. It just had a. It had such a a good energy about it. You know, if it like, wasn't for Connor, really this tell. would be a main event. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could really tell. Like all four of those guys that were fighting that this last weekend, those guys are title contenders for sure. Top three, top five mm-hmm. fighters easily in the lightweight division. So, I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal to go out there and see the, you know, which guys showed up and performed the best on that, on that night. And Chandler, man, he, he took it to Dan. Like he really didn't let he pushed Dan the pace, man, get a chance, you know? So that was, that was crazy. It just, it seemed like Dan never really got a chance to let off and, no. and Chandler didn't let him get that chance. It's that wrestler kind of uh, kind of action, right? Where it's just constantly pushing the pace and not mm. giving you a second to breathe, and that's and the shorter guy too, Dan Hooker. I think he almost had like five inches or something on reach on him. I mean, I think it was pretty. Yeah, it was like four or five. It's not right? like it's not because Michael Chandler's short 
Dan Hooker's just a really tall, damn lightweight. Yeah, he's just the tallest lightweight <laughs> in the division, I want to say. He's one of the tallest lightweights ever. And he's like six foot, six foot. I think one. he's six one, six. And, and yeah, Michael Chandler is normal. He's like at five ten, so like five nine, mm-hmm. five ten. So five nine, not bad. Uh, he, d- dude can pack. Gives, a it gives us little though. guys hope out there. All those five nine boys unite. Hey, I don't know what that's like, Blake. I don't know what that's like. I'm here for you guys. Are you? Hey, six three gang. Let me so let me hear. Michael Chandler. <laughs> Michael hey, here for us. Michael Chow, what me? Uh, man, what was nice? We saw early that they were getting some good trades. Um, Hooker and Chandler were trading well. We saw Hooker doing his thing, kind of being the wrestling because he was constantly circling. And as we all know, that's one of the harder things for a wrestler to have to deal with because in their sport, um, you can't back up, so you could you um you get like penalized and stuff for that in wrestling, and then the spinning just kind of throws off your your shooting. And that didn't doesn't matter when you p- just push the fight and get super close to him and, and all up in his space because Did you see how hard he was throwing those freaking punches. Every Chandler? punch had oh knockout. My God. Pot- I okay, so on, on this, this was why I was so excited about this Blake, is this is really the first live fight I was able to watch Michael Chandler. Of course, I, um, leading up to this, mm-hmm. I was able to watch his old fights, his old championship I think same fights for me. in Bellator because not gonna lie. I don't watch much Bellator. I'm sorry, but I I, I just don't. <sighs> here and there, here and there. If I if, if, it's, if it's on, on TV, TV I'll, yeah, I'll watch it. If but, it's on, but man, I was really excited to watch him live, and dude, he's just such a athlete. And I didn't know he had this kind of power. I'm just gonna be honest. I didn't know he had this kind of power in him. I didn't know he was able to like just one punch and uh, one like um just put people out with one shot and that's what he did right. then those follow-up punches on the ground didn't really do much the fight was over when he landed the hook. <laughs> that was gnarly he was just like that it was like that uh that habib finish when he's just on top and just going <laughs> <laughs> just you know, hammer, like, just hammer fist into oblivion except this one was like hooks instead i was like <laughs> damn bro call right. it he's done and that can we talk about the the perfect I told you this. I tweeted this. An absolutely perfect post-fight interview by Michael Chandler to cap this all too. A little taking a little bit of out of Ric Flair's uh, pl- um, playbook. You know his his um, um, kind of promo skills. And with a tear in my eye, Blake, with a tear in my eye, this is the greatest moment of my professional career. And then he goes out and calls out um, Conor McGregor and Khabib. So, of course, the, the Conor yeah. call out didn't work. And of course, well. It still might. It still, it still might. We'll we'll talk about that. It, poor, the poor day call out ain't working. Poor call out ain't working. And then the Habib fight, that's not working. Habib's nah, done. Working. Luckily, I, I'm happy about that, as I've expressed in the other shows. But, dude, he goes out and he kills it. And I saw this. Also, shout out to the GOAT, John Anik, replying to my tweet on Twitter about this. But he put out something about Michael Chandler. And then I, I said... And it's true. Every time I've seen Michael Chandler on my TV, I've liked him more and more and more. This guy just is a fun guy to talk to or to listen to. Fun mm-hmm. guy to watch. There's a lot of hate for him. I believe the hate was just because he is a Bellator guy. I, I really do think that. Um, but Yeah, I don't get that. It's I am like- a... I'm a huge fan of Michael Chandler now. It took it, it took me a week. I am all for Michael Chandler. He's one of my favorite fighters right now. I'm okay with Not saying disrespectful. that. Disrespectful, uh, you know. He, you can tell he puts maximum effort in there. Yeah. Uh, shows up. He makes way. He freaking doesn't complain. He says all the right things. I mean, he does all the media obligations. Mm-hmm. The dude's a professional. I mean, he he had a perfect freaking first. You know, a perfect debut. Really, like yeah. everything leading up, everything afterwards, everything's been pretty much perfect. And I can't wait. I I tell you, I cannot wait for his next fight. I cannot wait for them to say who the hell he's going to be fighting next. And we'll speculate on that because we got a couple names in mind that would be just about perfect. And uh, Michael Chandler, I mean, I swear, he might have had, this is up there for the greatest UFC debut of all time. This is well up there because there's a lot of guys, guys that have good debuts. A lot of people win in their debuts. But not a lot of people have this perfect of a debut all the way around from lead up to performance to post fight to um uh, post fight promo to post fight interview to post fight press conference. Well, and, and keep in mind too the level that he's he came in and fought. Damn, you know, he was getting thrown good. into the sharks right away yes. because he's a champion coming over from Bellator, 
And, you know, UFC doesn't want him coming over and beating up their guys. So obviously they're going to give him a tough challenge at first. And so for him to come in there and pass with fly, with uh, flying colors like he did, it's even more impressive with all the, the prep. Well, I'm sh- actually, according to him, there was really nothing for him to lose. There was no pressure. And I think that's probably why uh, a little bit, why, why his performance was so magical because just he, went really, out there. he just went out there and performed. If he keeps on doing that, I would not be surprised if we see Michael Chandler with a UFC lightweight belt around his waist. It could, man, he has the makings of a champion right it, there. I'm n- telling you. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm kind – we'll talk about it, but I'm kind, I'll just say right now, I'm kind of okay with Conor losing. I'm kind of okay with – I'm happy with Habib not coming back because there's a lot more we can do with this lightweight division now. Because I'm sorry, Habib's a fantastic fighter, but him only fighting once a year really – Really put a, a halt on this on the top of the lightweight mm-hmm. division. Now so many more matches. We might be able to see now. two or three lightweight title fights a year. Right. So I am I'm all for that. And then one last thing to talk about this fight before we move on to the the main event. We didn't really catch on TV, but what they were saying, what the commentators are saying, is that Dan Hooker he left the cage and then threw his gloves back into the cage. Now normally when so a fighter takes out their gloves and puts them in the cage, that means they're retired. We haven't heard anything from from Dan Hooker about this. He hasn't said anything about this. The, he didn't retire, did he? I don't think so. That'd be kind of weird. It'd be uh, really he's pretty, weird. He's he's relatively young. Um, he's been in some wars, though. It just kind of de- depends how much money he's made and if he's if he's over it, you know. Because I'm sure he can probably be a coach for the rest of his life, or a, you know, a training partner of some sort. Yeah, he'll just take over at City Kickboxing. You know, so he's done more than enough uh, in terms of accomplishing in this sport what, what you know, any, anything besides a champion could accomplish. Mm-hmm. It, it's just weird, man. It, that was really weird. He's uh, he's only 30. He's only 30. And he really just kind of broke onto everyone's screens like that fight over Paul, the win over Paul Felder, Mm -hmm. which of course was a questionable win. uh, Let's be honest, but a fantastic fight nonetheless. He goes out and has a fight of the year, fight uh, of the year candidate with Dustin. So it's it's a win and a loss, possibly two. Like a lot of people think two losses, but I, I. I'm confused by this. I really am. And then even his coach went on downplayed this loss because his coach said, quote, um, one loss doesn't mean anything. And so I. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to speculate. I'm sure he'll come out and clear it up soon. He's got a lot to think about. I, I mean, hope he's, he's not. Like, at the least, I he's hope got like he's like a month done. quarantine before he can even see his family. So dude's got yeah. a lot to think about coming up. And uh, I'm sure there's high emotions like he mm-hmm. like like we were saying, dude, there's a lot for him to lose. There's nothing for uh, Michael Chandler to lose. Yeah. And so now Hooker's got to regroup and, and, mm-hmm. and kind of come together and see what the heck's next. I hope he's not done, though. I love watching this guy fight, and he only puts on good scraps. And yeah. even though his fight only went two and a half minutes, it was a highly entertaining two and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. But, of course, it's his <clears throat> – it's his crew. He chooses whatever the hell he wants. He's the one going in there um, half naked in front of the world and taking hits to the head. So who am I to judge <laughs> sitting over here on my, on my chair? Okay. So he, he does what he wants, and there's I'm not going to argue, but I hope um, for the sake of the UFC, the lightweight division is better with him. So I hope we haven't seen the last of him. And now, Blake, without further ado, let's talk this gigantic – in a uh, main event that has some crazy, crazy implications with it. Now we had, of course, number four, Conor McGregor returning to the octagon in a, uh, about a little over a year. And he returns against Dustin Poirier, who's an absolute killer. And we see Dustin Poirier shock the world. And he gets the KO about two and a half minutes into the second round. And all I got to say is perfect game plan, perfect execution. And Dustin Poirier looked like a million bucks last night uh, on Saturday night. Yep, he had the better game plan. He had the better execution. It was a really close, a closer fight than a lot of people are uh, really giving Connor credit for. Mm-hmm. I mean, even it was a press conference. Well, it was a blowout. He, he flashed. He flashed me. There was a there was a moment there that he connected, and, and I almost went out, but he luckily. You know, he kind of stumbled, I guess, a little bit, but regained himself. And we all saw that, right? It, it, he got he visibly got rocked. 
yeah. visibly. And there was about one or two times I think in the first round Connor really got mm-hmm. him clean. But by the Connor end of won that the first, first round, by the end of that first round, the damage was just too much with that leg. Mm-hmm. I mean, he really. We've seen that so often now. It's absolutely. Well, can we talk crazy. about the guy that probably made this a? If I know it was, it was a legit strategy, but like really cemented as a legit way to win was probably Justin Gaethje against Tony Ferguson. Well, I mean, it's well, been at least one of the more recent ones. Like one of the Jose more... Aldo is probably one of the more Ooh. the more well known people for doing that. Yeah. But but yeah, Gaethje. I mean, think about Gaethje. What he would have done to Connor if if Connor fought cool. Gaethje his first fight back. He would have chopped his freaking legs down. Dustin like, Poirier has great trees. leg kicks. Justin Gaethje probably has the best of the kicking game in that division. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, it just it showed a gaping hole in in McGregor's game, which is surprising to me because I usually he's thinking all kinds of uh, different ways to win. At least his game. John Kavanaugh's is one of the best coaches in the fight game. It was it was very surprising, and especially since he let it happen so often mm-hmm. uh, in the first round did, and didn't really adjust. Well, yeah. what what Dustin Poirier was saying in his, his uh, post fight press conference is that Connor was, although he was trying to, he checked a, a decent number of them. He wasn't fully checking it though because when you check a kick, you turn your shin out to so it's shin on shin and not just shin on calf. But he wasn't turning his leg enough, so he was still connecting shin to calf for most of the time. Mm-hmm. Then that calf muscle sucks because unlike a thigh, the swelling doesn't really have anywhere to go on on, um, on it, so it just balls up is extremely painful and his visible i mean connor was walking around the crutch after the fight right and he's and and even kavanaugh said it wasn't even really the muscle it was more of that peroneal nerve where it's just kind of like an on off button it's like we saw with sugar sean he sugar sean the same, <laughs> the same the same thing nerve. happened to michael chandler uh so i mean uh, Conor just, mcgregor <laughs> michael chandler like oh, his sorry. primus oh sorry yeah so uh excuse me Sometimes it just happens, man. You get them in the right spot, and mm-hmm. their leg, Henry Cejudo, another guy, you get them in the right spot, and their leg just it'll uh drop foot, it'll just turn like an off button. You can't do anything, can't put weight on it, nothing. No excuse, though. Connor's not no. using that as an excuse, neither is Kavanaugh. No. That is that's not that's the exact opposite of an excuse. That is mm-hmm. a pat on the back to Dustin and his team and saying, Hey, you freaking hit a bullseye, you know, mm-hmm. like that's that's not possible to do every time you even if if you even try to do that so we're seeing it a lot more often though nowadays that's just something where you know the chin that's not the only button now we're seeing that there's there's a few other ways you can get these guys that otherwise make people really uncomfortable in that octagon you know it's like what they say blake there's levels to this game and there's more and more levels each day there's more levels getting yeah discovered each day added each day and then you kind of talked about excuses. A lot of people went to call this an excuse, but I would – it's it's not an excuse. It's just a good reason. Now, there's a very fine line between giving an excuse and giving a reason as to why you lost. We can agree yeah. on that. There's a fine line. But Connor went out, and he's he did – he admitted that it didn't help that he was away from the octagon for so long. And mm-hmm. obviously, that didn't help because he it was a lack of adjustment and the lack of reaction time is what he was saying, and that's – I mean, it, it, you can punch a bag, you can kick, uh, punch bags, um, uh, you know, pads and kick stuff all the time and spar, but there's nothing that really re- actually replaces what you do inside the cage. That's Hol- actually exactly what Kavanaugh was saying on Ariel Helwani's show today. Ooh. It was phenomenal. It was a really good interview if you have the chance to check it out. Of course. He was saying, I mean, yeah, sure, we practice those kicks. It's not like we don't practice, you know, checking those and, and all that, but when you're practicing, what are you doing? You're wearing shin guards, you know, his shins guarded, your shins guarded. So you might build up this false confidence. Like, yo, I can take mm. that a little bit. Whereas when you, when you, when one good, one of those hits you in a real fight with no padding on that could change the whole freaking fight. Just one. Now he probably took about, I'd say three, at least three good ones. Phenomenal yeah. leg kicks that, that just, immobilized him, they sounded you know? bad man <laughs> and he had a couple where he was dodging them and he checked a mm-hmm. couple but it's just it, it wasn't good enough you know he didn't he needed to treat that with a sense of urgency i mean mm-hmm. that that right there was that was all she wrote those leg kicks really mm-hmm. and then dustin finishing him against the cage i mean that was I, I i was completely silent and it's not like i was really even rooting for either one of them uh-huh. because i mean i respect both of those guys so freaking much dustin what he's come back from in his career 
Connor, what he's accomplished already in his career. I mean, both those guys. What yeah. Accomplished. I was extremely happy for Dustin Poirier with this. It was one. just so shocking because you didn't yeah. expect that. You did well, not expect Connor to get knocked the f out. See what what? Well, it's because we've never seen him before. We've seen him get submitted twice in the UFC. Um, we never, and those were his only two losses. We never seen him get knocked out. Mm-hmm. And what that kind of reminded me of, Blake, is a guy that I've never seen get knocked out in, in the way that he did, at least was going back to the second part two of Stipe and um, Cormier when Stipe landed that nasty body uppercut mm. and then he finished Cormier against the side of the cage and we just see Cormier just, you know, kind of fall down against the cage. All I've right. never seen that from him before. I've never seen a dude uh, like a guy like Daniel Cormier, Daniel freaking Cormier to get pieced up like that. Never seen Conor McGregor get pieced up like that. So it's, it's crazy. <laughs> MMA but, is a crazy game, man. It's a crazy sport. God bless MMA. I love it so much, but that's kind of our breakdown, but still more to talk about because now, Blake, we get to go from the recap of the card to the predicting what's going to happen now and predicting what is next for this lightweight division, which is the best division in all of mixed martial arts, hands down. Now, there's a couple options we're going with. Connor already... Shocker. He's really trying to push for that trilogy fight with Dustin Poirier. But I think that's the right move on Connor's part. Oh, no, no. I'm not going to knock him for that. No, never. Um, that's just good business. But the problem here is that Dustin, he's the uncrowned champion now with the belt pre- all but made officially vacated by, by Habib. So he's the uncrowned champ. And you're not going to have – there's only one man that could fight for a title, Blake – after losing and that's you romero okay that's the one person that this can do i don't think we get this fight because from a fight it's a tough sell I, there's it's a tough sell to the brass yeah. for sure um sean shelby not nah man i don't think he's gonna buy it charlie Oliveira or charlie charlie olives <laughs> charlie uh, olives. Dan, dan hooker's got me saying that now i love charles it. Oliveira. Charles Oliveira and Justin Gaethje are what makes this real interesting, you know, because we kind of got those guys sitting on the shelf. Justin mm-hmm. Gaethje is kind of in the same position as Connor, right? He lost to the undisputed champion. Yeah. You could almost match those two guys up, mm. but I'll, I'll get to that. Charlie, Charles Oliveira is really the only guy that has that shiny unblemished record where you could say, okay, let's put these two dudes. Like you just beat Connor McGregor, the legend of the sport. Boom. But Dustin, you're up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you deserve it for sure. Uh, the only guy to beat you recently is Habib. Charlie, or here I go again. Charles <laughs> Oliveira, you go up there because you're on what, like a 69 fight win streak? Yeah, something Tony Ferguson esque. Yeah, so let's get those guys to go to go at it, right? If, if that's the way it has to be. Because in a perfect world, I think business wise, you'd always want McGregor fighting for a belt. Mm hmm. But that's just a tough sell now after him getting knocked out. It's not like it was a close fight. He got finished. Yeah. So I think you need to, You kind of need to build him back up. If it was Chandler, a decision, we could do this instantly for sure. But, I think Chandler would be a pretty damn interesting fight for him, but that's a scary fight as well because he's a big time wrestler. You talking for Poirier? For for or for uh, Connor? For Connor because because uh, Chandler's out of the question for Poirier. It sounds yeah. Like, Poirier, Poirier already said, said no, but Poirier he was said he'd go so hot sauce yeah. if that's the case. <laughs> he said if that fight is offered to him. He's not only is he not going to take that, but he's going to quit and go sell hot sauce. I love that. Uh, but and then also Pori, he was speaking really highly of of, of uh, Charlie Olives, and so that is seemingly has to be for the lightweight title. It's going to be it, if everything goes well. It's going to be Destin Pori against uh, Charles Oliveira. That would be a hell of a fight. Oh my gosh, that'd be so good. But still, early edge goes to Dustin just because. Damn, that dude's on a different level right now. Uh but in for Michael Chandler. I really want to see Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje. I really want to see that matchup. That's probably a dream matchup right there. I I wanted his first fight to be against Gaethje regardless. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about that. It's tough. So he's going to have the number six now because he's taking Dan Hookers. You might put him at five. Well... It's it's gonna be weird because right now uh, at least in, uh, the the it's rankings haven't been up updated after this. So, I mean it's there. I mean rankings are almost just don't matter in the top of the lightweight division. So it, here, I'll, but, but as name, of now, it, it's players, Hooker. Bro. So from six to one, it's just real quick, Blake Hooker, uh, Ferguson. This is before this has been updated um, as of two fifty seven. Uh, McGregor, Olives, um, Poirier, and Gaethje. 
and we're missing we people. So we have Diaz in there. Uh, yeah, that was his top six. But I mean, besides that, we got. Yeah, I'm um, saying this is the big players, though. Big this players doesn't, doesn't matter what the rankings Technically, are. Rankings literally um, don't matter. Yeah, it doesn't right. Matter. Technically, Diaz. Where, where, is where did, how how often did Conor McGregor fight, dude? What's he ranked? Yeah, right. And, and that's one of the nice things. So right now, Blake, fancy booking this. We do Poirier versus Oliveira for the lightweight title. Okay, we do that. Then we do Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje for the number one contender um, spot right there. And then what I really want to see is give me a trilogy fight for Connor, but give me that trilogy fight with Nate Diaz. We had Nate Diaz running his mouth. He was talking a lot of smack to, to Poirier and, and to Connor after this on Twitter, which he was mostly talking to Justin and, and Dustin. Yeah, but um, I want to see that. I just that's a good fight. Trilogy, that's a money that's maker fight. The fight that I don't, I could care about the least right now. Really. Because it's just like it's, then what do you want to see? It's Nate Diaz at 155 against Connor. Like we've already seen that fight twice. We already know it's gonna be a banger. That's always gonna be in the back pocket. <laughs> I'd like for that to be for a title. That would be sick if Connor could get the his hands on a belt. <laughs> if Diaz could get his hands on a belt in that or somehow, some way, you know, they could fight for a belt. That would be the fight to make. But when it's just regular and they're trying to get their stuff, like let's let them fight some other people. So Connor what's next for Connor? Fight some different people. What's next for Connor? There's so many different people what do you want what do you there's right now Blake, tony ferguson you want there's tony mm -hmm. i'm telling you there's tony ferguson there's michael chandler mm -hmm. there's justin gaethje any three of those guys i would love to see him fight any three of those guys so we want to see from so if michael chandler would you rather con would you okay here we go would you rather connor versus chandler or connor versus gaethje or gaethje versus chandler I would rather see Gaethje versus Chandler probably. Mm -hmm. Connor right now it's it's tough. Like Connor really versus like, Ferguson could be good. That, tril that trilogy with Poirier is really his probably his best option. Yeah, but it, I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be possible. He has to get a win first, right? Because yeah. if we look at he's one and two in his last three UFC it's not fights. Fair to, it's not fair to the, the rest of the division. No, like, Charles Oliveira deserves to have. A shot at least at if not the number one contender then it has to be if not the mm -hmm. title then it has to be the number one contender yes that's what i'm thinking he's less he's in most one fight away from a title shot at yeah, most at the most and Conor mcgregor still, he still could be only one fight away from a title shot but he's got to do something crazy against someone that you know he's mm -hmm. he's got to get a, a, a legit win now yeah it's interesting, man. This is kind of the times where I don't envy Sean Shelby's job. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different ways they could go. But at the same time, no, no matter what fight you make, it's not a bad fight. Yeah, I mean, even the Nate Diaz trilogy is, is a decent fallback option. I just don't, it mm -hmm. just is so random right now. I'd rather there be a little bit of heat on that, a little bit of higher stakes going into well, that we've rather seen than it just being a, a lot of people are calling Connor boring right now. I, it would it be Nate Diaz that gets him going back again <laughs> to his old ways. Yeah, I know it's it's weird. It's weird not seeing uh, cause with him, man, that's kind of like he'll be really humbled the hell out of really him. <laughs> brought me in like back in 2015, 2016, when I really started religiously watching UFC. It was mm -hmm. a lot to deal with Connor because everything, anything that you put out, like YouTube, the press conferences, the embeddeds, all that shit, like you had to see it, bro, because there was gonna be something that like you you couldn't miss. Like mm -hmm. that was just hilarious. Like the who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Just something classic. insane would happen. Some, exactly. Something classic would happen every time. And now it's like, uh, he's very respectful. You can't knock him for that. But right. So. It's, it's just not the same, man. I don't know. I'm it, not with the whole psychology thing. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Because that's a, that's a question that was asked to Kavanaugh today too. Like, do you think him not being the McGregor that got him to where he was has an effect on his performances but nah, i saw what he did to cowboy personally i don't buy it. yeah we saw he was perfectly fine against cowboy yeah. like perfectly respectable he goes out and destroys him but although dismantle him it's just a difference doesn't pour it I'm, I'm i mean sorry to don't run he's one of the all-time legends of this sport yeah but he's nowhere near where dustin poirier is in his career right now nowhere near two different levels of that and it, it's not like I am willing to put most of the blame on this Connor loss to the fact that he hasn't been fighting that much. I am more than willing to to put most of the blame on that. I have no problems with that being the reason. 
it's a f- perfectly fine reason. It's a perfectly respectable reason. And lucky for us, luckily for us, Connor was saying before the fight that he still wants what six fights in eighteen months. <laughs> if I we love get, it. and he still wants that. He told John uh, John Hank that in the cage after this fight, he still wants to be active. And I'm okay. So let's we, hope. Let's hope they. Let's hope that they hold him to it because you know last. I, I, there's no reason not to now, man. Like he's still on. a money maker, and I still want to see Connor fight. But Connor is one of those guys where he doesn't have to fight for a belt. Half his fights are for a belt, and and he's still going to draw. I'm still going to watch him because he's a extre- even when he's humble, he's still extremely entertaining. Okay. I mean, even that that, that the round and a half that they did fight, it was seven like, man, seven or so minutes that they did fight. Yeah, it was, dude. I was like that first round was nail biter, pretty much. Yeah, right. So. It's like any of these shots could be mm-hmm. the last. That could be the you know, the the, the all she wrote. That could be the fairy tale ender. Conor right McGregor still has it. He's not done fighting. He's still a great fighter. Dustin Poirier was just a better man that night. Question: Yes, yes. or no? Do you want to see him talk shit again? That's not a yes or no answer. For, well, okay. Is yes, I do want to see him talk mess again, yes. but at the same time. I like a little bit of both. I, I like I like yeah. a little bit of hum. Like, I do. I don't mind the humble Connor, dude. I don't mind it. I don't want the extreme Connor that we had. If we can find a good balance yeah. between that, if there's a good in between, yeah. like not the Habib style and not oh. the current. Connor, I didn't like the like, Habib style. Right in the middle, like the, the honestly the Nate Diaz. Connor. I was gonna say, let's get the Nate Diaz Connor. That was the perfect Connor, right? I really. Yeah, because it was like it, it was Jose Aldo. They, Connor were going, was also... they were going at it, but they weren't. Jose Aldo was still a, a little bit towards the extreme, yeah. I'd say, because he's saying like, "Oh, if this was back in the day, I'd ride into an, on horseback and, <laughs> and kill every, you know, enslave every able-bodied man or some, some crazy." I can't remember what he said. The that Connor is quote. wild. Uh, oh, I, I think man. that might be the upper limits to the Connor I like, but yeah i would like to see him talk trash more yeah but he doesn't need to it'd just he be doesn't. more entertaining it would, it would, yeah it would it would make us happier and I, we're selfish for that oh yeah oh we're selfish for a lot more reasons and i'd be mistaken if i didn't mention just real quick before we move on to our fan questions if i didn't also bring up the fact that nate diaz was talking smack about dustin and him and dustin were supposed to fight back at mm-hmm. uc 230 so i mean do i want to see Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier for the title. I do not want to see that. Could we see it eventually? Sure. Maybe. Kind of. I'd much rather see Poirier against Charlie Olives and Nate Diaz against Conor McGregor or something else. But I mean, dude, Nate Diaz has a good life. He doesn't do anything. And <laughs> he he's, gets a he's in every conversation. <laughs> he's in every title shot, like welterweight, lightweight. It doesn't matter. Everyone wants to fight. Put him in middleweight too. He'll still probably get something. <laughs> That's where his brother used to fight. Yeah. So. Hey, I'm not blaming the guy. I'm not like like criticizing him for this. I'm not criticizing Connor for going for that trilogy fight, pushing for it. It's good business. It's good business. I can't credit the guys for good business, right? But hey, all I know, Blake, is that oh, no matter where the UFC do- goes with this lightweight division. We're all winners. We're all winners here because we're MMA As long fans. as they keep them going, bro. Line them up. Don't be waiting. It, it sounds like every fighter is willing to do that. It no sounds one like get injured. Line them up because the belt's up for grabs, dude. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's the vacant. Belt is up for grabs. It's, it's a vacant belt. All I'm saying, Dustin Poirier versus Charlie Olives. Let's make Dang that happen. Dang is the only dude pushing it, man. That's the only guy that's pushing for Habib to come back. And Habib, you, you, you he's know, done. You heard what he said. We he's saw done. the body language. He's. He's done. He's hey, done. hey, Sean Shelby, do your job. Smack, smack Dana a couple times, and let's get these fights rolling. Because vacate the belt. Let's go. Move on. Put Habib in the Hall of Fame. Whatever it takes yes. to like not have him feel disrespected. Because I mean, dude's all timer. And, and speaking sure. of Hall of Fame, I mean Dustin Poirier, all all ready to go in the Hall of Fame. But before we move oh, on yeah. to these fans, that, that uh, win solidified right. it. Hundred percent solidified it, but let's just look look through this resume. I mean, good win over Jim Miller a while ago. Anthony Pettis, Justin Gaethje, Eddie Alvarez, Max Holloway twice, Dan Hooker, Conor McGregor in a, a close round against a uh, close couple rounds uh, against Khabib. So, Hall of Famer doesn't pour Eddie Alvarez. I mean, there's the list goes on it's and on, dude. He's such a ridiculous. good fighter. He has like over twenty seven fights. Is it twenty seven or a little over now? It, of, it's uh, fights in the UFC. Well, it's uh, well, he was. Let's do some. I mean, 
or I'm um, guessing we're not going to count the WEC is is um, UFC. Mm, <laughs> we're just going to count that. His first fight so. was at UFC 125 Resolution when they were still naming their their stuff wow. like that. So 125. Whoa, okay, that's, well, that's not that's 25 after the Dan Hendo. And so and he was he one. was four. Um, yeah, no, he I believe he was eight and one at that time, and now we're all the way up to 26 and six. So God. that's in Poirier. Hats off to you, my friend, because you're a really damn good fighter. <laughs> yep, I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to throw hands with that man's. I just want to trade some hot sauce and eat some tacos, man. Ooh. It's okay. I bought some hot sauce. Boy. Well, sorry, Nine sorry. He's like Louis and the boy. Let's get that. Ooh. Okay, I want Dream right here. Have some gum or gumbo jambalaya with Destin Poirier with some of his hot sauce. Ooh. What if his hot sauce just sucks? Would you tell him? Oh uh, no. I wouldn't. <laughs> Hell no. I'd tell him. He seems like a nice guy. He'd take it all right. You, you think? Uh, they just snaps and just. <laughs> just uh, a guillotine on me. Hey, I'm just going limp. I don't care. It's over. <laughs> but there we go, guys. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what you want for the lightweight division because there's so many good things we can do. And it's hard to argue with any fight that you put up here at this point. Now, just uh, fan questions to cap things off. First off, thank you guys for reaching out to us and dropping your questions, whether it be on um, Instagram at Fourth and Long Radio or Twitter at Fourth Long Radio. Appreciate you guys. The first one comes from Trade Bait Podcast, and this is his question: Is what are you expecting from John Jones in his return? Now, uh, to preface this, John Jones is set to. Come back around summertime. We have that fight going down in March um, at UFC 260 between Nganu and Sipe 2. So, assuming no one gets murdered or just outright beaten, we could probably expect another fight. And hopefully, it would be four months would be nice. Six months, a little more realistic. Uh, going going with how this stuff goes, but we can see John late summer, kind of the fall area. Yeah, I'm thinking August, September. Um, yeah, that's that's a good time there. John Jones, he already he's like at two fifty right now, and dude looks big. Dude looks mm-hmm. good. So if John, if this big of John Jones can keep what made John Jones John Jones with the, it, which was his freak athleticism, his his kicks, his elbows, even a good ground game, a, a almost underrated ground game. But if he can keep up his quickness and pace, then I. Would not be surprised to see a heavyweight champion, John Jones, in the future. And sorry, Ngano, I'm kind of hoping that Stipe wins this. I'm expecting him to because the greatest heavyweight of all time against the greatest light heavyweight of all time, arguably the greatest pound-for-pound fighter of all time, that's going to sell some pay-per-views. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not going to be... As is as aesthetically pleasing as the poster for Francis and Gandhi versus John Jones would be, because I mean, let's just let's just be honest. Francis is a specimen. Bo- but, yeah. Oof. But if we're talking, <laughs> you know, dream lab. matchups, Stipe, he's the best heavyweight fighter of all time that we've seen in the UFC. I mean, he's he's beat the who's who. He's he's had the rematches. Say, he's well, made of course, only seen UFC. I would say hands down. I mean. Croak, what do you want to do? What do you want to give Fedor a million Aiko? Hey, you never know, man. All those dudes are juiced up back then. So oh, that's a good point. Different, different, different era. Pride never like die. Compare apples to oranges either. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying for UFC, for sure, he is the best UFC heavyweight of all time. Yeah. And for sure, John Jones is the best light heavyweight of all time. That's like you said, it sells itself right there. Um, even the casuals, I think it'd be easy for them to get excited about that. I mean, mm-hmm. It's just good. It's just going to be a good <laughs> matchup. Do can a hey Blake in your opinion? Can we see a heavyweight champion John Jones in his career? I mean, I think we could, but that's going to be if he's fighting Stipe. I don't know, man. That's Stipe is such a good all around fighter. It's it's really tough for me to pick against. That's Stipe, a fun fight, but, though, man. That's a. But fun the thing fight, is, yeah. DC's beat Stipe. Mm-hmm. John Jones owns DC. And then, as we know, Blake, MMA math means absolutely nothing, though. So I went three and <laughs> six or something on my picks this weekend. So don't listen to me. But uh, still, it's, MMA it, math is fun to discuss sometimes. And, it may and, not always be oh, yeah. truthful, and mm-hmm. it may not always be, you know, logical. But who did it? You know, I, it's a good conversation piece. 
uh, I th I forget. I think it was MMA on point. Fantastic channel. I mean, uh, second only to ours, of course. But they do some really good stuff there. I believe that a video on breaking down MMA math. It, it was some good stuff. I do recommend that. Uh, but to to sum up this, my answer to this question, John Jones is going to be John Jones in his return. I know that might be a boring answer, but he's a really damn good fighter, and now he's just going to be a really good fighter at thirty more pounds. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say, like, what do I expect from him in his return? Mm -hmm. Hopefully not a fucking, hopefully him not pissing hot, because I would say. <laughs> oh, wouldn't um, that ruin everything? Wouldn't that? No, it, it seems like he's he's got his head on straight recently. I, I saw a really nice video. Him today. giving autographs to the yeah, kids? Yeah, like that. that was nice. That was nice. That was so, nice. Good, good job. Good, good yeah, job, John no, Jones. I'm, <laughs> what I'm expecting from John Jones in his return, a solid a solid matchup against a solid opponent. Hopefully it's either going to be Francis or it's going to be Stipe. I'm not going to argue with either. Until we get a little more clarity, it's hard to say what else because I mean, it's, it's still at least what, five, six months away. Yeah. So it's going to be a while, but I am looking forward to it. Now our last yes. question of the day comes from ball. Don't lie radio. And he asks us, will Connor leave MMA to pursue boxing after this loss? Now we I kind of gave my answer earlier in the show about this, but if Connor won this fight, Connor won this fight and tried to outbox Dustin Poirier, he might have just been calling for that Pacquiao fight. He really might. I think there's a strong potential that he would do that. But, but did you see what happened? He got outboxed by Dustin Poirier. Not and, even well, not even only that, but did you see Pacquiao has a fight line? And, oh yeah, Pacquiao also has a fight. So obviously that's not going to happen. Ryan Garcia, anymore. that's such a weird and fight. But I don't understand why Pacquiao is still fighting. He's a questionable politician, so he should just stick to that. But <laughs> go be a senator or whatever you're supposed to be. <laughs> go be damn it. Go run your country, okay? Yeah. But. Conor McGregor, no, he's not going to leave MMA to pursue boxing. Now, of course, there's a lot of speculation about this. It's not a bad question, but I am, I'm glad that he's not. It in. was a better question a week ago. Yes, yes. But now with with how the, the win. fight turned out, yeah, nah. No, there's his brand took a little bit of a hit. That also, from all of his interviews he's been giving, he wants to fight. We it sounds like we have more of Conor McGregor, and yes. if we could see Conor two three times a year. That's going to make me so happy yes. because the sport's better with Conor McGregor. It is. That's it might fact. get his love. You know, it might get him fired up again. You know, right? this loss right here. And he was more the motivated than tournament. ever going into this fight too. So it's not like he yeah. took a night off. But um, Dustin just showed up, man. Dustin is a freaking champ. He's the uncrowned champ for that. Hey, breaking news. Dustin Poirier is just a really good fighter. <laughs> It doesn't take give a that, genius that to say that. that. Credit. Yeah, but I mean, uh, not a bad question with this one because, of course, there's every – we never know with Connor. He might just retire. I mean, from even – the I mean, who knows? Maybe he goes and fights Jake Paul just for shits and gigs because he gets he gets 50 mil. I still want to see Amanda Nunes versus Jake Paul. but I'd rather see, yeah, I'd rather oh. see Amanda Nunes knock him out. Even give me Valentin Shevchenko against Jake Paul. Oh. Cyborg. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just mean. Uh, but no, oh, Connor shit. is not going to leave MMA to pursue boxing. Although, I, I say this with a lot of hope because with Connor, it, it's Connor McGregor. We never really know what he's going to do. He might retire for the fifth time tomorrow uh, when the show drop or or when the show drops, and just just be done with MMA and go to boxing. Like Blake said, go fight Jake Paul. But realistically, no, he's sticking with the UFC. And a Conor McGregor that's going to fight three times, two, three times a year, is only going to make the sport of MMA better. He's only going to make the UFC that much better. I'm okay with this. Your mm. thoughts too? Yeah, I think I think another question too that you could tail off into is will he box again? Mm. And I do think he will box again eventually. But will he leave MMA to For box fully pursue boxing? I don't think so. I think. I mean, he's getting guaranteed 25 mil paydays from UFC. That's good stuff. That's good. It's not like he's ever going, well, I don't know. Boxing has a million different belts across 20 different organizations. So he might be fighting for a belt if he went to boxing. He's probably going to have an e easier role getting a belt in the UFC, though. So who knows? But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it for us on UFC Talk 30. 
Uh, let us know what you thought about everything from UC257. Let's, uh, let us know what you, your thoughts about what's in the bag because we all want to know. And then did you also have trouble trying to pay, trying to give the UFC and ESPN and Disney your money? Let us know about that one too. And also your thoughts on what you want to see next in this lightweight division. And also, Blake, of course, Thrive Fantasy, ThriveFantasy.com, Google Play Store, App, um, Apple or the, the, the Apple Store, then go get yourself some money guys be like blake go get some dubs okay because i'm sure blake will do a better job with your your prop betting um than what you did on saturday i'm still i really if i bet oh, i wish i bet money on the ufc on saturday i would have won a lot i would have won a lot but hey it's in the past right unfortunately you live and you learn you live and you learn. That's what I like to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great uh, rest of your day. And then go check out our interviews with some of these great UC fighters if you haven't already. You know, Sam Alvey, Justin Jane, Sasha Platnikov. Throwback with Josh Emmett, uh, a guy that really hope he's coming back soon because it's featherweight division. It's going to be even better with him in it. And look, this featherweight division is great. And Josh Emmett, one of their best fighters, isn't even in it. But um, enjoy that. Uh, and, man... Just, just UFC, MMA, Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. It's a great time.